Hello friends, welcome back. Today I'm going to give you an update on the uh, inside stuff. The season for outside is just starting here now. The soil temperature is 6 degrees in the sunny plot. And so we'll start now for the, with the onion seedlings. About the onions and the onion trays. As you know I have three of them. Now, especially in this tray, they were all dying. You see all those little, uh, little brown leaves? So they were starting to die back. It wasn't so bad on this tray, but some of them did it on this tray too. Well, the top was wet. And so what I thought about was that maybe I'm keeping the top portion wet. It was getting nothing from underneath, so the soil in between, it was all drying out. So I started to water them more intensely, and they all recovered. Except for on this tray, right in the back, uh, pretty much half the row I lost. And I think the second row out as well. But most of them recovered from where they were dying. Uh, so the soil was drying out, even though I was keeping the top surface of it wet. If I'm keeping this tray, it's only a matter of it. I have to make the holes on these two trays bigger. And if I zoom in on this one, you see, you'll be able to see the dead leaves. So that was from the same ideal. I've got a few red spring going. So if I plant those down by the front fence, I might be able to leave some there and grow seed next year and maybe get better seed than I got this year. Now as for this tray over here, remember I had the white onions in there and they weren't sprouting and I reseeded it with white onions again and they didn't sprout and now I have the red Weathersfield and the Rosa di Milano in the back that was the last of my red onion seeds and from here out is a Elsa Craig. So the Elsa Craig started to sprout earlier, they're not all sprouted, um, but the other ones are coming up. So now this is later on, that's why it's still not filled out yet. That might tray might fill completely out. We've had a omega block in the weather. Uh, so for the past two weeks we've had a northerly flow it's put uh, everything behind normally I would be well I shouldn't say normally in the past three years I would be setting out onions in the garden at this time but this year it would have been a week if not two weeks later anyway this is the last of that other tray I'm going to up pot these things today Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful batch of basil. So what I'm thinking about doing now, is coming on spring, I can get more compost, uh, is starting a new batch of basil. And when they get up, then I'll completely harvest these and then start a new batch. So I'll have half this shelf filled out with basil that I'm harvesting from, and half of it will be just starting. So when they get up, they're coming up to the lights, I'll start a new batch, and when that batch gets halfway up to the lights, then I can completely harvest down the other batch and start a new one. This, I used to have a set of sprouting trays, and I had a whole bunch of sprout seeds. Somewhere in the, my many moves, I lost the uh, sprouting tray set, and I didn't like sprouting in the uh, bottles, so I quit it, but I still got lots of sprouting seeds. I put some in here the other day, this is just one of those mushroom things that you buy in the store, and I've got this up as a microgreen. I want to cut this down today and have a small salad. I want to start doing this and grow those sprouts out to microgreens. I'm going to make a bigger tray so that I'll have a normal size salad when I harvest it. These are my uh, tomatoes and that. That's white fly on that one. 
White fly seems to love peppers. I don't know why. I add some that were really weak. You see that one down there that's kind of dead. Hopefully the camera is focused on it. Um, so today I'm going to up pot all these. This one's got his first leave. What I was waiting for, see? Usually I wait for them to get their first set of true leaves like this. And uh, then I put them up in the bigger pot. But because of the aphids and the weakening, I'll uh, up pot these things too in a bigger pot. I'll wipe off all the aphids and I'll put them in a uh, bigger container. Peppers I have grown are not doing very well, are they? The leaves are all crinkled and covered in white flies. Hopefully the ones I'm up potting today, I've got better soil and they grow better. The micro tomatoes are still growing. Some of them are starting to fade. Now this is the golden pearls. You see when they're ripe? It's hard to get the berry off without squishing it. Super delicious berry. It's loaded in flowers. So if you want to and you can um, maybe you can clip it, pick it in behind the berry like that and then you'd have to gingerly get that uh, stem off somehow yeah that's how you'd have to do it and maybe freeze them and then take the stem off I mean it's loaded in flowers as you can see and the, being the relative of tomatoes this is all you have to do to get the uh, flowers to pollinate, right? You just shake them like that. This one's still quite green. This one is getting some bad leaves on it. There's a little bit of yellowing on that, but that might be I just have to turn it again. This here, one of the bigger ones, you see it's starting to really yellow down now. So it might be running out of nutrients. Which is fine. Uh, next year I'll get another pot of compost. In the fall, I mean. I'll get another pot of compost uh, and start a new one and then grow it through next winter. And here's the other bigger one and starting to get some uh, nutrient deficiency look. Start them in the fall, grow them through their winter. You've got your little cherry tomatoes in house. Then of course comes spring. You're putting stuff outside and all your work is outside anyway. This one is a yellow tomato back here I think and I just noticed I have a ripe one. They're not dead yet. They've got some yellow leaves on the bottom. But they're not dead and they didn't mature. Come pretty close to I can uh, plant those outside now. This pot see dries out a lot quicker when you get the warmer days. This plant is still alive, but it's looking worse for wear. Whereas the one in the big planter, it's just looking perfect. Still haven't uh, found out what I use this for. It's called a curry plant, but it's not the curry that you know as the red powder in the, that you buy in the store. Rosemary growing excellent. These are coming along. See, remember I uh, potted these in an earlier video and I got them put out here. They're not growing fast because it's cooler out here, of course. And that's just perfectly fine. I'll leave them there and when the weather starts to warm up a bit, then we'll harden them off and put them outside. It did get warm enough at one point that this pepper started to come back to life. And then we add that omega block like I was mentioned and uh, 
things cool down again. Still got a leaf there, but it's surely going back into dormancy, waiting for it to get warmer again. Now I'm going to start with the tomatoes because, like I say, they're weak in that uh, where they're growing now. And I'm hoping that when I hot pot them, they'll do better. I have 94, I think, of these. And then I have a few of these. That brings me up to uh, over 100. It's really just sifted topsoil I have, but I have to do with what I got, right? It's one thing I have to make sure of coming on this winter that I have a good compost mixture. Enough of it that when come planting time like this I have uh, some ready to go. Maybe I'll lay them down here so they're not oh, making the picture look messy. I have about 30 liters of soil here. It's a little moist. So what I just checked then was that to make sure yesterday I went through and I put these So that it would make contact with the uh, wicking mat. And what I'm going to do is put them half full like that. And I'll plant the seedling down there. It's going to be right under the grow lights. And when they grow up above the top. I'll take off any leaves that's down in the cup and I'll fill up the cup the rest of the way. So let's get the little pokey thing and get one out. I'm going to take this one. This was a nice one. See, not much root on it, eh? That's why it wasn't coming up. So I poke a hole right to the bottom. Hard for you to see, I think, but there's a hole there that goes right to the bottom. Make sure there's no uh, aphids on it, eh? Okay, it's not going all the way down, so I've got to make the hole down further. A little bigger. Pour a bit in there. And then if I put some water in, it should settle the water right down. Yeah, see? As soon as I put some water in there, he dropped the rest of the way. So he's right down to his seed leaves now. That's good. And it'll survive like that.
and I'll put it up here on the wicking mat. I don't have this wicking mat uh, wet yet, but uh, I'll in just shortly I'll soak the wicking mat and put water in this tray. So as long as nobody calls me, I'm going to put you on high speed. It took a long time. I have everything taken out now. There's a few, see, that uh, I said they're not going to come to anything, so I left those. And then there's some cells where it didn't uh, germinate at all. I just know it's 42 days. I didn't get a one. I'm going to let this dry out now, clean it out, and plant it out with uh, something else. I'll see what I'm supposed to be planting here in the next couple of days. Some of them are bigger, some of them are little tiny ones. <coughs> I planted everything that I thought might survive into these pots. I have eight Bloody Butcher, four Beaver Lodge Slicer, six Furthest North, two Centennial Rocket, two Lata, one Stupice, two Gold Nugget, five Early Siberian, three Sunrise Bumblebee, eight Berkeley Tie Dye, three Brandywine, five Davison, three Speckled Roman, and ten Bush Beefsteak for a total of 65. Now I've had planned to put 34 down by the south side of the house. That leaves me with 31 left to go to find out somewhere to, to put them. But don't ch count your chicken for the hatch of course. I mean, like I said, these are the ones that I think might survive. And uh, maybe some of them won't. So <laughs> wait until they finish up <coughs> here on the end. I've got the garden huckleberry. I had six garden huckleberry. And then I have to reposition them because they're not in a good spot right now. But I had six uh, long purple eggplant seedlings. Now, the next thing I have to put up into a bigger pot are these right here. I've got a few lettuce here, but most of this is peppers. 
So the peppers will have to stay down here. I have some just germinating. But there are some that are getting larger. They're doing very well. Place. I'll put this tray, I think, when I'm done taking these out. Up where I add the tomatoes. And uh, the peppers that I'm going to put up into a little bigger pot. I'll put down right there. So I have these, I have three lettuce, and I put them in these. And bring those upstairs with the others. Did I tell you I had to go out and get another uh, bucket of soil? <clears throat> oh, I'm going to have to get more water. But I'll do these and then I'll bring you back. This tray is pretty much empty. I'm not going to bother with those two uh, kohlrabi. But as I said, there's some peppers still sprouting. And so because of those few rows right there, I need to put this tray back on the wicking mat and uh, see what happens. I have Eight California Wonder. This Apache F3. So that's uh, I had an Apache, which is an F1. I saved the seeds. Uh, that would be an F2, and then I saved the seed from that. That would be an F3. I have six. The hot Portugal mild pepper. I have five. Red candy cane, sweet peppers. And then I have the uh, Snowball Cauliflower one and one Everest Broccoli. Now I had, have more upstairs already. And the three lettuce that were there, I already uh, brought those up to the sunroom. This is my next tray. I have five black locusts here to put up. There's only two cells but I'm going to make this into three uh, pottings of lettuce back there. And I have three spice bush to pot up. I have two more spice bush growing here but they're not ready to pot up yet. Of course the trees, I pot these up into uh, milk container right so they can get a nice long root they grow a longer root so we'll put them into milk cartons like this now that's done I have the three early curled Simpson settings back there a three spice bush and the five black locusts now these trees they will remain in that uh, milk carton for at least a year, maybe two, as well as the spice bush back here. I'll just have them outside in a fish box, like I currently have the kiwi, which I've got to get something done with. Everything is up potted again, and uh, it's only a matter of getting on with the next sewing now. Outdoor gardening season is just starting here in Newfoundland and this is going to be an exciting year. Thank you for watching.